Okay, everyone. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming along today uh, to our webinar uh, on um, uh, college students, specifically related to college students and their progression to uh, Ulster University. Um, the talk today hopefully will last around half an hour. Uh, I'll try to cover a broad range of, of subjects, uh, give a few examples, go through the UCAS process, a wee bit of information about the, the university and stuff as well. So um, hopefully you'll get something from us. Say it'll probably take about half an hour and then we'll leave a bit of time then at the end for questions and answers after that. My colleague uh, Jonathan Holland is all, also on this session. Uh, so feel free to use the question and answer facility. You'll see it um, on the, the, uh, the top or the bottom of your screen. You'll go to it and pop a question in there. Uh, Jonathan will try and get back to you. Uh, uh, in some instances, uh, we can leave it to the end and then I can answer the question live uh, uh, if we get to it at that stage. So I say, hopefully you'll find some, uh, it informative and feel free to ask uh, as many questions as you would like. So first of all, just uh, why else University? Uh, so loads of different uh, reasons, obviously, why to choose Ulster University um, uh, uh, in terms of how we relate and perform against other universities uh, throughout the United Kingdom will be uh, more than comparable against many and how we perform across a broad range of courses hopefully will make it very uh, enticing for you in terms of choosing to come to Ulster University. Uh, just some of the quick stats there, just for 5th United Kingdom for our courses around building, 5th United Kingdom for pharmacy, um, uh, 11th in the UK for uh, accounting and finance, 11th in the UK for food science. So I'm not going to go through them all, but there's loads and loads of examples on there and uh, of how we compare against other universities throughout uh, the United Kingdom. You will get all that information on our website when you go to our website ulster.ac.uk you'll be able to um, search for your course and then within that then you'll get a, a detailed breakdown of the course what it's about and and all that sort of thing and then also there'll be stats in there about how we perform against other universities that offer uh, similar courses sorry guys my uh, screen is just frozen every second so um just a wee quick, uh, again, just about Ulster University. Uh, we have four campuses spread throughout uh, Northern Ireland. So up at our McGee campus, uh, where we do likes of our nursing, social work. Uh, we do some engineering, construction or com uh, computing, as well as our business. We do Irish, uh, our music and drama are all taught up at our McGee campus. Then we have an existing campus in Belfast City Centre. Uh, so you might be aware of it, um, where we do like a lot of our art courses, so art and design, photography and video, uh, architecture, games design, animation, all those courses are taught in our existing campus in Belfast. And then we have a campus at Jordanstown, our probably our biggest and best well-known campus, uh, but it will be closing. So you guys, either be the, your year, um, first year of your A-levels or maybe in your first year of your BTEC, uh, so you guys will be the first group of students going into your new campus in Belfast City Centre. So Jordanstown will be closing. And then the majority of the courses, not everything, but the majority of the courses that run at uh, Jordanstown will be moving to your new campus in Belfast City Centre. And then we have a campus up at Coleraine, up around the North Coast. So the likes of, <coughs> excuse me, pharmacy, biomedical science, uh, psychology, uh, environmental science, geography, courses they got there taught up at our Coleraine campus. So this uh, just hopefully will map out just a, a bit of the process that you're entering into. So whether you're over there at year 13 or your first year of your BTEC, hopefully you're starting to do a bit of research in terms of thinking about your uh, courses and where you would like to go because before you know it, it'll be upon you. You'll be doing your, your uh, UCAS form and you really want to have, have done as much research as you can because the more informed you are, the better position you'll be in whenever the time comes to start doing your, your UCAS form. And across all the colleges throughout the, uh, Northern Ireland, they've all um, got their own careers advisors. I, I know them all very well. And uh, please do link up with them because those guys are a great resource for you. Uh, especially in terms of doing your personal statement 
Um, and I'll chat a wee bit about that later on, the importance of that, especially relating to some courses, such as uh, our social work, um, nursing, of course, they got where your, your personal statement really needs to be directed towards those areas of study. So, as I say, do uh, make use of that resource that's available to you at the college. So, when you come back in, hopefully everything's all back and you'll be back studying again uh, in uh, college uh, come September. Uh, you'll be applying through UCAS then. You can apply for up to five courses on your form. Uh, and then uh, the UCAS deadline is the 15th of January, but you're uh, Definitely uh, better off never to leave it as close to that um, uh, because, as you know, just different things can go wrong. So the earlier you get it in, consult, as I say, with the careers advisors in the colleges. Uh, they'll help you and guide you as best they can. And then uh, get your five choices on your form and then submit that then to uh, the university. There's some of the courses you have to go through the HPAT process. Again, I'll chat a wee bit about that later on. Uh, but um, that's for six of our courses. And that takes place the last weekend in January of 2021. You'll undertake that on a Saturday. It's a three hour exam. And as I say, I'll go into that in a wee bit more detail. And then hopefully uh, you'll get five offers back from the five universities you've applied to. And then you'll need to narrow that down to two. So you'll have a confirmed choice and an insurance choice. And uh, that's really your confirmed is obviously the one that you really want to do. And your insurance is your backup. And then come uh, that August, I know with BTEX and stuff, you can get those results around uh, June time. So you'll know how you have performed. But in terms of the whole process, the university won't be uh, acknowledging those and making offers until or accepting you onto the course actually until the results day uh, come uh, August when everybody in terms of A-levels and school leavers would be getting their results uh, as well. I just want to try initially just to try to put in a wee bit of perspective, just the, the reason for doing uh, a webinar specifically related uh, for college uh, students. This wee table here just shows you uh, just a breakdown of where our applicants come from. Uh, and you can see uh, the breakdown between schools, whether they be a grammar school, secondary school, and then closely followed there through the education, the further education uh, sector. But uh, more importantly, it's where actually our students who actually get on to the course, uh, where they come from. So we get those applications on the previous slide between the schools. But on this one, it's shown you that actually our uh, vast majority or the, the, our biggest percentage, sorry, the biggest percentage of students that come to the university will be from the FE sector. OK, so that's really, really vital that you guys are aware of that and you acknowledge that, that it's such an important um, uh, part for the university to be engaging with, to be uh, knowing what's going on and to be relating to uh, uh, the courses that come and the students that come from uh, the FE sector and be that through uh, students that do A-levels at, uh, at a college, students that do BTECs, students that uh, do access certificates or go on then and maybe do HNDs, foundation degrees, and then apply into uh, the university. So uh, we're well aware of their importance of the colleges and as I say, Ulster University really values uh, the students that we do get from uh, all the colleges throughout um, Northern Ireland. And then just a breakdown in terms of the entry qualifications of our students. So two thirds would be from an A-level background. So again, a uh, vast majority coming there from schools who would be offering their A-levels, but also uh, students would, uh, a lot of students, uh, for example, would go to do their A-levels at uh, college. Um, Belfast Met, for example, would be the biggest provider of um, A-level provision in Northern Ireland. And um, a lot of students would go there, do their A-levels, and then progress into um, uh, university. Then BTEC range in around 15, 16% of students who have completed BTECs will come into uh, university. And then access courses, again, um, a, a big percentage there. And then the rest of the students then coming from Irish sleeve inserts and uh, baccalaureates and different uh, combination uh, uh, qualifications. So in terms of you guys applying, um, your fees uh, at Ulster University, they're £4,395 per year. Everybody will pay their uh, fees. They go through Student Finance NI. So again, at your second year of your BTEC or your second year of A-levels, through the college, they'll have all those Student Finance forms for you. 
you can relate to, you can go to those guys or else go to Student Finance NI directly and get the forms and fill those in. And then uh, you pay your tracing fees, that money goes directly to Ulster University and then uh, you only have to start repaying it after you earn over 18935 per year. Then you have to start repaying uh, your student debt. Uh, just to give you a wee bit of a breakdown, uh, lots of students do consider going across the water for their studies. Um, and this wee table here just gives you an idea of costs involved. With that. So uh, your tracing fees alone will be more than doubled. So there'll be £9,250 anywhere in, in England. Your accommodation costs will also be considerably more. So you can see there, uh, and as well as that, your cost of living. So um, your accommodation, flying backwards and forwards, uh, cost of living, things like that will just be considerably more. So definitely worthwhile pursuing and staying here at home. So if your course is offered here uh, uh, at Ulster University, um, we'll be more than uh, delighted to have you. And our range of courses, hopefully there'll be something there that you'll be of interest to you. Um, and you can see not only in terms of the financial savings, but also in terms of the courses we offer, the facilities, the student support, um, the opportunities um, that'll be there to you, uh, hopefully will be comparable against any university uh, throughout the United Kingdom. And, and just to give you a quick a breakdown of some stats uh, relating to your graduate employment in this, um, it should really be something that you guys should be thinking about. Um, especially uh, in the college environment you've you uh, picked a, probably a very vocational course um, and therefore you're uh, more tuned into um, the skills that employers are after and one of the the stats that we like to promote is that 94 percent of our graduates will be in employment within six months of leaving their course at Ulster University and that's something you really should be thinking about when you are thinking of where you would like to study and uh, because it, um, you know, you can see there's a lot of time, there's a lot of finance, a lot of costs involved when you go into university, but at least at the end of it, you know that there'll be some benefit to you. And as I say, Ulster University works very, very hard, our employability team, um, in terms of getting students into employment. Uh, and you'll have those opportunities during your time at the university in terms of uh, work experience, in terms of placements, internships, and um, uh, working abroad, all those different opportunities, and then also uh, getting your food in with employers after you leave uh, the university. So uh, do bear that in mind. As I say, it, it is a big factor for you to be considering um, and trying to uh, weigh up where you would like to go, why you would like to go, and if you are thinking of other universities, well, what are, what are their employment prospects? Um, how do they work with employers in terms of trying to get you into employment? We're the number one university for graduate employment in Northern Ireland and we do that because we offer upwards of 2,000 work placements each year. So in the vast majority of our courses that's for a full year. So after you guys, so if you come to university you do your first and second year then after that then you take a year out so you go on the placement and then you'll come back in then and finish your studies in your final year. And that placement is more and more uh, vital these days than ever where employers are after students, not just with the recognised qualifications, your uh, 2-1 or your first class honours degree, but also having those recognised skills um, that employers are after. And hopefully, as I say, during your time at the university, during that placement, you'll be able to build up those skills that hopefully then will prepare you for going into that area of uh, work. So, uh, as I say, that placement is a really uh, invaluable opportunity for why is it? Because 58% uh, of graduate employers would be unlikely to recruit a candidate with no work experience. And that's how important it is these days um, that uh, students get that uh, work placement. And that's why we put such a big emphasis on it. And that's why we encourage students to take up that opportunity. Because I'd say whenever you graduate, you could be one of a number of students going out into the labour market, applying for jobs, going for interviews. And one of the main things that employers will be saying to you is what skills and qualities and experience do you have for this role? And if you're just solely relying on your previous experience, that probably in terms of your qualifications, that probably won't be enough. But if you're able to draw upon that experience you've had through your uh, placement and what you took on and all those uh, skills and qualities and attributes that you built up during that time and the projects and what you succeeded in, then you'll have that opportunity to be able to talk about that as part of your uh, interview. 
and some of those range of skills that employers are after. Um, your communication skills, commercial awareness, self-management, problem solving. So hopefully during your time at college, you'll be developing these skills and working on them through different um, activities as part of your course, maybe working in teams um, uh, doing some um, group work and things they got there. And then also about your time management, maybe if you have a part-time job and how you juggle that with your, your studies as well. And then just to highlight some of the, the growth sectors here in Northern Ireland, this was taken from the Northern Ireland Skills uh, Barometer. Um, and I'd like to say it also University offers courses across all these 10 areas. Um, you'll see the top four there would tend to be sort of STEM related courses, those science, technology, engineering and maths. And a lot of students would come into those areas from BTEC, from college uh, backgrounds. Uh, and would progress into those range of courses that university would offer. But then also right down to admin and support services, finance and insurance that we offer, uh, arts and entertainment, so across all our broad range of art courses, fine art, foundation year, graphic design, animation, games design, all those range of courses that we offer as uh, students can progress on to um, at Ulster University. And then what's the importance of those skills? So if you just quickly look um, just at this uh, we, uh, table here, it just shows you. So the third one up there is an MQF level three. So that's what you guys, if you were leaving college next year with your uh, BTEC extended diploma, for example, uh, is the equivalent to an MQF level three. So your employment prospects are around 67% and your average earnings are around 314 but if you look at the second from top, which is an NQF level six, which is hopefully what you'll leave with from Ulster University, you can see that your employment prospects increased to around 86% and your average earnings nearly doubled to around 603 pounds per week. So you can see there's a vast um, difference in terms of your average uh, uh, earnings uh, and your employment prospects also increase as well. So hopefully I'll just try to put in a wee bit of context for you. Uh, sometimes students think, what's the purpose of this? What's the benefit? Why would I go on to do a degree? Well, you can see there what they are in terms of your financial implications as well as your overall employment prospects. So our courses then, we have uh, around 150 courses split between four uh, main faculties at um, the university. And what I'm going to try and do in these next couple of slides is the entry requirements. And I've picked out a few. I can't obviously go through them all. What I've done is I've picked out a few of the most popular ones and I've tried just to highlight the entry requirements relating to uh, BTECs that uh, the majority of students would be doing at uh, college. So um, the likes of Sport and Exercise Science. So this is all available on our website. I've just taken these screenshots just from our website. I'll show you where you'll get that in a slide or two. Um, but this is really important for you guys just at this stage to be thinking about this. Um, because you just want to make sure, well, right, I'm doing that course, I'm doing that particular BTEC, but what are the grades going to be? Because as, as it's um, a continuous assessment with your BTEC, um, it's best then that you know, I need to get a distinction overall profile in that one, I need to get a distinction in that one, and be working towards that. Um, so you, you know then, come the end of it, that you've got then the grades um, that are going to be looked for as part of that particular course. So you can see there the extended diploma profile for sport and exercise science, uh, distinction star, and two distinctions in science or sport related um, extended diploma. Okay, so really important to say that you do that little bit of research onto that. Um, software engineering, um, again, lots of students will move into this from computing, range of uh, computing courses that are offered. Uh, at college and they'll move into that. There is a, um, a range of qualifications that are uh, acceptable but again your overall uh, BTEC profile there's a distinction star to uh, distinctions. Uh, again uh, there's examples on there where students maybe are doing A-levels along with uh, a subsidiary diploma so that might be applicable to you and again just worthwhile just uh, looking up that and making sure it applies to you. Then another course or physiotherapy, very popular with students from a college uh, background. So it's saying there three distinctions, but it has to be in a relevant science based uh, BTEC. Okay, because say from um, uh, an A level point of view, that would be three Bs at A level. And one of those A levels needs to be in a science related subject. 
So again, they're looking for that equivalent in terms of your BTEC um, that you are doing um, a science related to BTEC and the modules within that, then they'll be looking at those modules to make sure that there's enough science within it uh, that would um, enable you to um, get an offer from the university for the likes of physiotherapy. And then our electrical and electronic um, uh, course, uh, electrical and electronic engineering, again, a broad range of engineering courses that the university offers that a lot of students, again, from uh, college will go on to do. But I wanted just to highlight this one because, um, yes, you can be doing an extended diploma, as it says, or an irrelevant engineering subject and be achieving your overall um, uh, profile of three, di of three distinctions. But you also need to ensure that you have a merit in either your maths, your engineering technicians, or further maths for engineering technicians, and a merit in mechanical principles and applications. Because what happens is that, as you know, in your BTEC, you'll get a range of modules that you do, and then other ones that you can maybe pick. And students then are maybe avoiding those uh, tougher um, modules, just to put it in a word, uh, and then they're doing other ones. And then it comes in whenever they come to apply to the university, the university then looks for their module breakdown of their BTEC and then the students then haven't got the right modules. Okay, so it really is important that you uh, go and look up, make sure uh, you'll get this information on our website, go and look up the course you're interested in or courses and then how that applies to your BTEC. And then within that, they might also then be saying that you need to have a particular, uh, a couple of modules that you need to be doing within that BTEC. Okay, because even if you are doing the right BTEC, as I say, the right um, name, if you haven't picked the right modules, you'll still not get on to do that particular course. Okay, so hopefully that, that'll make sense to you. Um, and uh, as I say, just to stress to you the importance of just doing that little bit of research on that. That's all on our website. Uh, if you search for a particular course, so for this example, it's looking for business. Again, a lot of students coming from doing a BTEC in business. Um, across all the colleges and then they'll progress in to do your degree uh, program. Then you go to the entry conditions and then you'll see the second one down there is for applied general qualifications. So you can see there it's uh, two distinctions and a merit uh, to three distinctions. So uh, for business there's no particular requirements, uh, it's just as long as you achieve the grades uh, for the course. Okay. And then across your BTEX, uh, again, some of those ones I picked out were the more detailed ones where you're needing to do a particular uh, BTEC and then needing that BTEC and some examples to be doing particular modules within that BTEC. There are loads of courses at the university where it'll not matter what BTEC you're doing as long as you achieve the grades that are required for the course. So the likes of law or business, as I stated there, nursing, social work, Lots of students will go on to those courses from college and as long as you have the equivalent of the, the uh, three A levels, so as long as you're doing your extended diploma, you've got your GCSEs uh, in your English and Maths uh, and a science, then you'd be eligible to apply for those courses. Okay, and again, you'll get all that information on our website. So uh, just for the purposes, just to reiterate, it, it is really important that you just take your time to do that and look that information up. So I'll run through a few of the courses then. I'll not spend too much time on this um, just because uh, I want to get to questions and stuff and help out at the end. So a foundation year, the art and design, a lot of students do apply for that. Um, it's a one-year course. It allows you to cover different areas such as animation, fine art, graphic design. So if you're not quite sure which one you would like to do as your degree, you can do that foundation year. Uh, do a range of three or four different modules during that time and then choose to do one. Uh, cinematic arts or communication advertising and marketing screen production it's only a brand new course that just started this year delivered in our Belfast campus humanities loads of uh, students will come into this kind of area criminology in the criminal justice system or law degree again very popular with students from college um, and politics community youth work communication and counseling uh, studies faculty of computing engineering and the built environment uh, artificial intelligence, uh, computing technologies, computer science, interactive software or interactive multimedia and software uh, engineering. And software engineering was one of the examples that I gave earlier. Uh, so just best to look that up in terms of your uh, progression, making sure you're doing the right BTEC uh, 
and stuff for that one. Engineering, biomedical engineering, civil engineering, mechanical, mechatronic, and renewable energy. And then our architecture and built environment, architecture, architectural technology, planning, quantity surveying, real estate, and safety engineering. Uh, so within our business school, as I was saying earlier, uh, lots of students would do uh, a broad range of subjects to get into the business school, but obviously uh, the main progression would be from a BTEC in uh, business studies that a lot of the colleges throughout Northern Ireland would offer uh, as an extended diploma, and then students then progress into uh, the likes of business studies, marketing, um, business information systems, uh, travel and tourism, leisure, uh, those kind of courses there. So we'll offer all those range of subjects um, for you at degree level. They'll all have a year's placement. Uh, the vast majority of them we deliver at Jordanstown, they'll be moving to Belfast. But we do offer a broad range of business related courses up at our McGee campus as well. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, business studies with specialisms and accounting with specialisms as well would be delivered up at our McGee campus. And then within the Faculty of Life and Health Science, um, uh, so we have our biology, biomedical science, dietetics, food and nutrition. So a lot of students, again, doing a BTEC in a, in a re relevant science related subject um, would progress into the likes of those courses, uh, their geography, environmental science, um, and then our nursing course, which we offer either adult nursing or else mental health nursing. Again, I'll chat a wee bit about uh, the importance of your personal statement for that. Uh, so it really is important that you engage with the careers advisors in your college, have a chat with them. Uh, they'll have lots of experience about what needs to go into um, your personal statement for nursing and also then how to prepare for the interview, hopefully that you'll get as part of that application process. But I'll, I'll chat a wee bit about that also. Uh, pharmacy, psychology, it's non-subject uh, specific. Uh, so it'll not matter if you're doing a um, combination of A-levels or a B-Tech, it'll not matter as long as you achieve the grades for that uh, course. And in our health sciences, um, uh, diagnostic, health physiology, occupational, podiatry, radiotherapy, speech and language. So a broad range of courses there and I'll chat about a few of those um, at, that they are in uh, HPAT. And then our sport, again, I picked out our sport in the previous example just to highlight the, the qualifications required because they are very high. Um, uh, so just be sure that you're, as part of your BTEC, that you're aiming for that distinction star uh, and two distinctions to make sure you get on to do that um, course. So these courses within this one, um, these are all funded through the Department of Health. Um, so, but as you can see there, those middle ones that are just in blue, um, they're all funded as say, so they're free for you to do, so you don't pay any tuition fees, but there's an additional test to do, which is called the HPAT test, which is the Health Professions um, Admissions Test. So you'll set that in the last weekend in January of 2021. And it's a three hour exam, you'll undertake it at, the, at a campus, at one of Ulster University's campus. Uh, you'll set that exam, three hour exam, covering uh, three core areas, your interpersonal skills, your verbal reasoning and uh, your written communication skills. So you'll not be able to revise for it and um, everything that you need to be able to answer. Uh, the questions will be in the test and then it's how well you perform on the day in terms of managing your time, uh, using the data, analysing the data, interpreting the data, your writing skills that then hopefully then will uh, get you the mark, the necessary mark to get you on the study on that, those particular courses. And then as it says there, between our nursing, our adult nursing, mental health nursing, there's an interview required. Uh, so again, uh, uh, hopefully you'll get through your personal statement and then they will invite you in then for an interview. And you'll, you'll we receive around 2000 applications for nursing. Uh, half of those will be eliminated just by the personal statement. And then the remaining half then get the chance to go forward uh, for an interview. So you want to be in that stage where you'll get an interview. Um, our nursing course, we have around 240 places. And then our uh, mental health nursing, we have around 60 places. So UCAS process, <coughs> excuse me, um, the main part of it, uh, as well as choosing your five uh, options is your personal statement. Okay, so that's around 4,000 characters. So it's around one side of an A4 page. So it's not an awful lot to work in. 
Um, so it is best that you take your time, do, do a few different drafts. The UCAS.com is a great resource for you to go to. There's loads of information on there about what goes into a, a person's statement. As I say, do uh, check in with the careers advisors in uh, your college and they'll have loads of experience in terms of uh, what goes into your personal statement. And then uh, some of it, as I say, will be more relevant than others, such as uh, likes of social work, your nursing, where you're really needing to direct your personal statement towards those areas of study. Uh, so what skills and attributes and qualities do you have that will separate you out from those uh, 2,000 other students, for example, that are applying for uh, nursing? And then there's uh, interviews required, so for likes of arts, nursing, social work, art and design, uh, you need to uh, go through that interview process. A portfolio is required for some of the courses, such as art and design, architecture, uh, so that'll be your usually your second year of your BTEC. Uh, you'll pull together that portfolio, you'll submit that electronically, so you usually take around 20 pieces, um, submit that electronically, so you'll have taken photos, and then put that uh, to the university. And then hopefully then you've done enough to get on to do that course. And then the HPAT test is required for those six courses as I identified on the uh, previous slide. So there's no such thing as, as a perfect uh, personal statement. The main thing is that it reflects you as an individual and it's honest. And um, don't be tempted to copy, you know, somebody else who has gone through this process. Uh, UCAS does use software that checks personal statements and you will be rejected if any of it is uh, plagiarized or copied from another version. So uh, please uh, do ensure that it is your own work. Um, a good breakdown in terms of maybe 80% academic, 20% ex extracurricular. So what else are you doing outside of your studies? Uh, do you have a part-time job? If you do have a part-time job, for example, just say it's in a, in a supermarket, don't just say work part-time at, at the weekends in, in Tesco's you know, what skills and attributes and qualities do you get from that? Are you on the shop floor? Are you uh, building up your communication skills, relating to people, um, able to time manage? Are you working in the finance office in it or on the till so you're able to handle money, you're responsible, you're trustworthy, things like that. So you want to try and elaborate on that and use those skills um, as part that you can relate then uh, in your personal statement as part of your application for your course. So. I say do try and elaborate on that and anything else that you're doing outside of, of um, college and um, any volunteer and community work, youth work, things like that you want to put down on your personal statement. And just be aware of your spell check, the UCAS software when you're typing straight into it, it won't spell check. Uh, so best to do it on the likes of Microsoft Word and then copy and paste it into um, the UCAS uh, software. We do have our own talented athlete scheme uh, and lots of students do apply for it. So do um, make use of it. The main attraction is you to get a reduced offer on your BTEC. So um, whenever you apply for a course, if you're considered a talented athlete, um, university then would write back to you and based on the, the, uh, the grades for that particular course in the university or what you've applied for, the university would reduce um, the grades for that. Um, so definitely worthwhile doing, as I say, if you're at that sort of level, you could be a plan for it and you'll do that in the second year of your BTEC, usually around October time, those applications open, you'll apply through our own Talented Athlete Scheme on our website, so it's separate from UCAS, you'll apply on our website and um, hopefully then um, you can uh, be accepted and as I say, then you get a reduced offer of your uh, grades. We do have open days coming up. Um, not just they're just open at the minute uh, for schools um, to register. I know colleges would tend to just um, leave it for yourselves to register for that. That'll open around May time. So you as an individual, you'll be able to register for that or for the open days, whatever one or different ones that you want to attend. And then you can come along on those various days. There'll be talks delivered on those days um, by all the different courses that you're interested in. Uh, so no matter what it is, we'll hopefully we'll have a talk on those various courses. You can go along to those talks and again, it gives you a really good insight into that particular course. Uh, it's usually delivered by a course director and some students on the course. So they give you a good idea of what it is and what it'd be like to study on that particular course. And then also it allows you to see around the campus, get a good feel for it, what it would be like for you 
if you were studying and living on that uh, campus. Uh, and I'd say this is just um, forms part of a series of webinars we're doing. I know that's solely related, just um, is trying to make it relevant for you college students in terms of uh, the examples there. But um, all the core, all the course obviously are open for you guys to be a plan for um, uh, come September uh, when you're back hopefully studying uh, in the second year of your BTEC, you'll start that application process. But we do have course specific webinars on, webinars on at the minute. Um, and they'll be running again from next week. Uh, so uh, we've, we're going to have tourism on there, we're going to have pharmacy, we're going to have um, engineering, we're going to have economics, um, we'll have a broad range um, of subjects, nursing as well, and um, we'll have a broad range of subjects on there. So uh, do check out the web page, um, go to the webinars uh, and register for those various webinars. And as I say, they'll be uh, course specific, so it'll give you a good idea of that particular course, the modules you'll be studying, the many hours a week you're in, and it'll usually be delivered by either a tutor on the course or the course director. Okay, guys, so in terms of the webinar and the presentation, that's it uh, for today. Um, my colleague, uh, Jonathan, has been, I know he's been working there and answering some queries. Um, hopefully we've got through them all for you. Uh, Michael, we have, sorry guys, my name's Jonathan, we have a, a question just coming in there at the end, and it's uh, could we say anything about the new paramedic course? Um, when has it been introduced and um, entry requirements? Now, just have a look back on a few emails because this course um, is essentially in the making, it's, it hasn't been validated yet, uh, which is one of the reasons why it isn't on at line and on our website at this moment in time. Um, previously, it, it would have been. Uh, administered, I think Michael, that be right, by the Northern Ireland Ambulance. Well, yep, yep, so the students um, apply directly to them. Yes, but yeah. since that, of course, there's been development uh, for the university to commence its first BSc honours in paramedic science. Now, the first intake yeah. um, is due to be released for 2021 entry. Um, I don't have any details yet of entry requirements. Um, so it's, it's, it's best for, obviously, Michael and I not to suggest what they could be uh, at this moment in time. But it's good news that it will be. I think it's in the making. Uh, and we hope that that will be up on our website maybe over the next uh, month or two for consideration for September yeah. 21. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and students just asked there, is there a specific extended diploma for speech therapy? So uh, we do offer speech and language therapy. That's a course that you'll apply university is bursary funded and you also have to do the HPAT test but uh, there is no uh, specific uh, course you need to apply in terms of a BTEC it's an extended diploma um, that would get you on to do the likes of speech and language therapy so um, there's nothing there uh, for the likes of um, physiotherapy as I was making reference to you earlier um, some of that does need to be in a science related uh, BTEC but your speech and language it doesn't need to be so and um, that's on the website there at the minute, so you can check that out. Okay, so hopefully that's answered that one for you. Um, so and there's another question there about... Hi there to you, Johnny. for finance. Connor. Somebody just wishing, uh, thanking us for the talk. Um, yeah, there's, there's one there, Michael, about um, is there a set time frame to apply uh, for student finance? So would that be for your tuition fee loan? Yeah. Uh, or student maintenance loan. Um, uh, do we have any dead or dates around those? Uh, so for um, the, the student finance, all that will be available just on uh, student finance NI. Uh, so you'll be able to um, download those forms uh, for um, when you're back in, in the school, you'll go through that process. You usually need to state within the form where you're intending the study. And that's obviously relating to the course that you want to get on to. Um, if that does change, you, you, you just um, get on the student finance and you make those changes. But you have to then, uh, you, when you do apply, you have to just make it relevant to the course that you're, or the university that you're wishing to study at. Uh, but during year 14, that'll usually be, or second year of your BTEC, that'll usually be around um, March time that you'll start a plan for your uh, student finance. Uh, somebody's just asked there, just for software engineering coming from BTEC, um, level three engineering, is there specific subjects that require 
a certain uh, grade uh, for that. So um, you just give me one wee sec. Um, so it's just, I'm just doing a wee quick, um, yep, so it's a B tech, a, a D star and two distinctions. So it's quite, quite high grades for your software engineering. Again, you don't need to be doing particular modules for that, uh, but you'll need to be achieving those particular grades. Okay, um, so um, a lot of students do apply, as I say, coming from um, a college background because there'll be a wide range of, of computing um, BTECs uh, that would lead on to the likes of uh, software engineering. So, um, but as I say, there's not stating there anything in particular. Uh, just as long as you achieve that, that distinction star and then uh, two distinctions. Okay. Don't think there was any more there. Um, yeah, to study languages uh, alongside. I think a client was looking for a shout out there from you. Right. Um, Somebody's just asked to study languages alongside a business course. Is there certain grade requirements? So the only language we do is business and Irish, don't we? Yeah. Uh, yeah. McGee. Albert McGee. So that would be the only one that we offer. That would be the only language um, at Ulster University, unfortunately. Um, uh, so if that's, if that's the one that you're wanting to do, you, you'll do that up at McGee. And obviously, then you would need your language, your Irish language at um, A level. Uh, but um, uh, anything else, any other languages, unfortunately, we'll not, uh, we don't deliver those courses. Okay, so hopefully that's answered that question for you. I think that's everything. Okay, guys, so um, don't feel you need to hang on. Um, as I say, in terms of the, the formal presentation, that is um, it over for today. Um, but uh, if anybody wa wants to ask any questions, I'll be hanging on here for another five minutes. So uh, please feel free to put them through to me. But as I say, just you no need to hang on. There'll, there'll be no more uh, formal presentation. But I'd just like to thank you all for taking part in today. Um, and hopefully you've all got something from it. Um, and just uh, for the meantime, just stay in and stay safe. Uh, but obviously in the bigger picture, uh, hopefully you'll all be back to college in the very near future. And best of luck with all your studies at college. And we uh, hope to see you all at uh, Ulster University in the very near future. All right, guys. So uh, best of luck in all your studies. Um, so for level three ICT, is there any specific grades you need in certain subjects? So. Um, as long as that level three ICT is an extended diploma, uh, and then it'll depend what it is you're going on to do. The majority of our um, computing courses would be just would would be um, uh, non-specific in terms of the um, the subjects, the modules you'll need, but you will need to achieve certain grades. As I said, there are the likes of software engineering, which is distinction star and two distinctions. Okay, so for software engineering, yeah. So your specific grades were, um, your overall was a distinction star and two distinctions for the likes of software engineering. They weren't state in particular modules that you need to do within your 